Hello, Kazgem here, and today we're taking a look at Traffic Manager President's Edition for City Skylines. That's right, this is a uh, must-have mod. This is probably on everyone's top list of things that they want to learn how to use if they're getting into modded Skylines. And I cannot recommend the mod more. It adds a lot of great traffic management aspects to the base game, and some things that in the past have been integrated into the vanilla games. Things such as being able to toggle stop signs on and off. So... Let's go ahead and dive right in to Traffic Manager President's Edition. So the first thing I'll note is make sure that you download the stable version of the current release because there's an experimental labs version that is sometimes not fully functional. And I would not want you guys to get too confused. So make sure you get the stable version. At the time of release, I'm using version 11.3.2. So first thing you need to do is you have this button that will appear somewhere on your screen it seems to appear in different places for different people but for the most part look around the edges of your screen and you will find it it's just a traffic light and it's got a little crown in the background so all you have to do is tap that and you'll get this window popping up and you can drag the window to everywhere anywhere you want on the screen i like keeping mine somewhere over here on the right for whenever i'm doing traffic so let's go ahead and take a look at the individual tools within here the first of which is the traffic light toggle and this is a very simple tool all it does is it adds and removes traffic lights so i don't have a traffic light here go ahead and tap it look at that there's a traffic light and now we can get rid of the traffic light it's like magic you can do this anywhere you can come on over here and say nope no traffic lights for you just pass on through this is just gonna be chaos for everyone wow there's a lot of pedestrians here so the next tool that we're going to talk about we're going to skip over time to traffic lights for the time being we're going to go next to the lane connector. So the lane connector is a very powerful tool in which you can sit here and assign specific lanes. So all you have to do after selecting the tool is highlight. And you'll note that after you click an intersection, so I'm going to click this one, for instance, zoom on in, and you can see that I've got nodes. And I can tap any of these nodes or the lanes immediately behind them, but I recommend the nodes just to keep it easy. And you can tell them, okay, you are only allowed to go to this lane. And now, anyone that is in that lane will only be able to access that lane. There are no exceptions. And then there's also, you can do that just about anywhere. You can sit here and say, you have to go here. Let's just for fun say, you have to go right here. And you have to go over here. Just really make this intersection a mess. You can really make it as goofy as you want or as clean and crisp as you want. I recommend using the mod correctly because otherwise you will break your city and even Biffa won't be able to save you at that point. So let's go ahead and undo all of that damage. There we go. Because again, this is just an example of how you can do that. But more specifically, you can also do things such as say, okay, you can go straight to only those two lanes, but not the outside lane. Cool. Or... You can say you can go to all three, but naturally they will go to all three anyways, so I don't really think that's too necessary. So let's go ahead and undo that, and let's show you some other connections that you can make. You can also say one node can go to several different directions, or if you are looking at a central node of a road instead of an intersection node, you can actually say, okay, you are just going to go straight sit here and do it like this and then you can say okay but you can also merge to the left there we go or you can sit there and work out an area to where you have say a construction zone and then hey nobody can enter that segment of road that way it's just like a little construction zone some detailers will really like that and also another thing you can do after selecting a node you can hit Control s if you hit Control s It'll make it to where there's no merging. That is a godsend. So if you're struggling with people merging all over the place and you just want to keep them going the same direction, particularly after a, an intersection of some sort, using Control s is an absolute godsend, and I would absolutely recommend doing it. So let's move on and see what other trouble we can get into with this mod. So the next tool is the change lane arrows. And this one is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is tap an arrow that you want to change. So what you do is you select a node at an intersection. So you can sit here and say, I'm messing with this road heading towards that direction. 
or this road or this road. It's not looking at all four at the same time like the lane connector tool is. But the way the lane arrows work is effectively the same way, but a little bit more loose with the rules. So you can say that this guy can go left, these two can go straight, and that one can go right. And it will just make it to where you always have to kind of follow the general direction, but it's not speci it's not lane specific. So these guys won't be funneling to a specific lane, except obviously buses and trolley buses are going to go that way, just because that's how I have it set up right now. But you can also go over to an intersection like this, and let's say that this one's a mess. We've got people going everywhere, and we just need to clean it up, create some dedicated lanes. You can always hold control, tap the intersection node, and look at that dedicated turn lanes that is amazing this is a relatively new feature but i am in love with it it is absolutely amazing and you can always come in later and say oh well i actually want two straight and one left and there you go you're all good to go there so let's go ahead and see what other tools we have the next tool we have is the add priority signs and this is a very good tool all you're going to see this do if you tap intersections you're actually going to see three blank nodes in this case, or four or however many nodes intersect at that intersection. And if you tap one, you can get a pass straight through is what that orange sign is. Then you have a yield sign or a giveaway sign. So basically you yield to the people that are coming from the other directions, but you can still pass through if there's no one coming. And then the stop sign, which obviously the they will stop and then go their direction as long as it's clear or just give way for all directions. My personal recommendation is if you have a busy road like this, just say, okay, you guys can just pass on through. So let's actually make sure you guys pass on through and these guys yield. There we go. And if it gets too bad, you can always just tell these guys to come to a full stop. And now the next tool is the junction restrictions. And we'll keep working on this intersection just to show you. And what you can do is you can see four separate tools on each intersection, except this one only has one. We'll get into more details why later. So let's just look at one and describe what each of one of these does. So this one, the top left with the changing arrows, that is for switching lanes mid-intersection. So if you want to allow them to merge in the intersection, go ahead and tap that once so it highlights green. Over here, you have the u-turns so by default u-turns are not allowed but you can go ahead and allow them right here if you want it's actually it can be useful in certain situations down here on the bottom left you have the pass on through even if busy so basically even if traffic is backed up past this crosswalk on the other side these guys will now pass on through anyways even if they're blocking people from this other direction which can either be very useful in say a roundabout situation or less than useful in say a busy downtown interchange it just depends on what you need in the moment. And then the last tool, the uh, blue box tool right there, that is pedestrian crossings. You can go ahead and just block pedestrian crossings. You can say no pedestrians will ever cross this intersection. And that can be very dangerous. So be sure not to use that tool unless you absolutely need it because otherwise you might end up causing more traffic by people hopping in their cars and going places, which is not what you want to do. And also a word of caution, if their only option is to walk, and you've blocked their crosswalk, they will jaywalk. They will completely walk anyways, and there's nothing you can do about it. So make sure that if you're going to use this, they still have a way to get to work, or school, or wherever they're going, or their shops. So next up, we have the speed limits. So the first most basic option is just directional. So you can sit here and say, okay, well, I want a speed limit of 50. Or I want it for the whole segment by holding shift and tapping that. There we go. You can just say 50, 50, 50, all the way across. Nice. And then you can sit here and say the other direction needs to be 55. Because why not? You can even slow down a single segment in the middle for silly reasons. Or if you have a major interchange nearby that you need to ramp people up for or slow them down for. This is really good for slowing down people coming off of a major highway, by the way. You can sit there and slow them down off of an off-ramp, theoretically. Also, you can sit here and say no speed limit. So no speed limit, go as fast as you can. This can be really dangerous, especially if you have a lot of intersections in the area, so be careful with this option. I've just shift clicked it into submission and I guarantee there will be problems here <laughs> if I do not change that back before I close out this video. But the final thing you can do is note that I am in miles per hour, but you can also see it in kilometers per hour as well. That is your own personal uh, choice. So. 
The next step here is to do lane-wise speed limits. Now these lane-wise speed limits are best demonstrated on a highway. So let's head on over to this highway over here. So let's say we have this highway and we decide we want to have a passing lane. And this is something that I've done for extensive portions of my city in the past. You can sit there and decide, okay, the speed limit for this outer lane is 75. Or the inner lane, rather. And then the outer lanes are, let's just say, 65 with a 70 in the middle. Just for good measure, because that way it creates a passing lane effect. And over time, you'll note more and more cars using this outside lane to go longer distances. And then slowing down, getting in the outer lane by the time they need to say exit off to this or area or something similar up next we have the uh, parking tools well go ahead and go to the parking tools that's the p crossed out we'll get to the vehicle restrictions in a minute but this is the parking tool and all this one does is it says you can or cannot park here so the default for most streets is you can park here but if you go ahead and use this tool you can restrict parking right there look at that no more street parking nice clean and crisp it's really good if you want to change the aesthetic of an area or if you want to force people to use your parking garages. More on that later. There we go. And you can, of course, go shift-click and it'll do it for the whole segment, like you just saw up there above. And now, let's get into vehicle restrictions. So, vehicle restrictions can be very handy. We'll hop on over to Highway Land again. And all this is going to do is, you've, it looks really complicated, but I promise it's not. All you have to remember is, left to right you have sos then you have waste then you have freight then you have taxis then you have buses then you have cars so you can sit here and say i don't want cars in the outside or i don't want trucks in the outside lane let's say and then let's just say emergency vehicles should not be in let's say the outside lane you can sit here and do something like that. Or you can say no taxis on anything but the most outside lane. You can say, you know, buses cannot be on the outside lane too. You can do a lot of very powerful things. And you can, of course, take a restriction and apply it to a whole stretch of road at once, like we just did. Or if you sat there and given your perfect configuration and you still want to fix it, you can go ahead and apply vehicle restrictions to entire road with the single button up here on the top left. Look at that. It's taken all my restrictions and applied it all the way back. That is nice to see. Now, let's take a second look at lane connectors. So, these lane connectors can and should be used in highways to, say, avoid collisions. So you can sit here and drag this forward. This is where the real power of Traffic Manager comes in. Look at that. Now, as they come on, they will not intersect. And then I go one node further, tap this, and then I use control S to say you must go even further before you even think of merging. And now these guys have a significant lead in before they're able to merge over. And that can be really powerful. So that, that there is probably the most commonly used feature of the mod across the board, I would say. And now I want to go ahead and mention we're not going to be getting into time traffic lights today. That's going to be its own video because it is relatively complex. That is probably the most complex feature on this mod. But we are going to take a look at the back end options. So if we hit escape, go to options, and we take a look into traffic manager presence edition, there are a lot of different things. So let's go ahead and take a look at these different options. So you don't need the tutorial messages. You have the language, can be the game language, things like that. And then you can change the theme for your road signs. So I've, I've given it US signs. And then you have simulation accuracy. You can change it to very high, very low, etc., etc. And this will tax your computer. If you don't have a very good computer, this will tax your computer if you set that to very high. And if your computer is struggling, set it to very low if it's struggling to simulate everything. Next up, you've got gameplay. And all this is going to do is it's basically going to create rule breakers. So if I switch this to minor complaints, I'll have some rule breakers. And that can make traffic a little bit more realistic and interesting. And then oh, down here, this is the most powerful option. By default, you'll see this option as off. But 
what this does is this advanced vehicle AI kind of rewrites the city's vehicle AI and it has them do merging a little better. It has them take advantage of more lanes at intersections instead of suffering what a lot of people refer to as super lane syndrome. So in order to enable that, just tap this and dynamic lane selection. I would recommend if you're going to turn this on, put it at least to halfway. So something like 50%, but if for some reason you feel like you can do it and your computer really is up to the task, go ahead and knock that right up to 100%. You will be happier. Enable more realistic parking. This means that they will prefer things like parking garages or parking lot roads, things like that, that are near their work as opposed to on the opposite side of town. So this is something that is very interesting and it will reduce the amount of street parking in particular, especially if you combine this with getting rid of street side parking. And so go over to policies and this is something that I recommend you take a look at. I'm not going to go into details on this page, but a lot of good options are on this page. So read through each option and see which options are for you. The one I recommend most is turning red at red traffic lights. That is something that I definitely recommend. That way they can always make their uh, near side turns without crossing traffic. And then that's your overlays. You don't need that. And then you've got maintenance. Now, if your game is chugging a little bit and you have Train Manager Presence Edition installed, I would totally recommend hitting remove all parked vehicles and reset stuck Sims and vehicles. And there's a reason why I'm saying this, because that will actually get rid of any of your Sims that are kind of stuck in a loop, just wasting any processing power, things like that. That is something that can be very powerful if you've done a lot of major traffic changes lately, or if maybe you've created you know, a situation where a lot of people are stuck in, say, a roundabout and it's just a traffic jam. Just use that. It cleanses all sins and it all goes away. And then, of course, you can alter some keybinds. Not too bad. But for now, that's actually going to be it, folks. This has been a brief overview of the Traffic Manager Presence Edition mod. Again, if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Be sure to like the video, comment, and let me know which mods would you like me to take a look at in the future. And keep an eye out for an upcoming dedicated video on the timed traffic lights from Traffic Manager Presence Edition. And be sure to check me out over at twitch.tv kazgem. And until next time, this is kazgem signing out. See ya!